On a snowy night, a two-story home is lined with multicolored Christmas lights across its porch and over the tops of low-lying bushes. Matching Christmas wreaths decorate the front doors. Inside, a green Christmas tree is decorated with red holiday balls and garland. A little girl is lying under the tree, fingering a handmade angel ornament on a branch above her. Beside her is a jumble of wrapped packages. She smiles gently with the blush of Christmas lights glowing against her young face. She looks up suddenly toward the next room and rolls onto her tummy. She sees a man walk down the stairs carrying a suitcase. He goes out the front door. The little girl watches a woman hurry down the stairs after him. The woman stops at the bottom of the stairs and takes a few steps away. Her arms cross tightly in front of her. The girl hides behind a footstool as the woman hesitates, turns, and walks down a hallway. The little girl hurries to a picture window. She looks into the night to see the man crossing the yard toward the street. He stops and turns toward her, pausing for a moment, and then slowly walks into the darkness. She stares into the snowy night, and a single tear rolls down the little girl's face. In present day, a single drop of water falls into a partially filled sink. Christmas snow. A young woman's in a bathroom. On my Such a cold, cold night You slammed the door I saw you walk away Later, she's jogging My heart just stopped A tear ran down my face I saw you walk away She stops at a curb Outside my window pane And crosses her lawn Never seen she picks up a newspaper. I still think of you. An article with her picture reads, Kathleen Mitchell, The Gourmet Grinch. Every single day, I still think of you. Later in the kitchen, she puts fruit and a thick green liquid into a blender with some powder. With one hand on the lid of the blender, she peers at her picture in the newspaper on the kitchen counter. Later, Kathleen is at her bathroom mirror, brushing her hair. She looks down at the folded newspaper, and her photo stares back at her. She looks at herself in the mirror. In the kitchen, she pulls out a news section titled Food and Wine. The headline, Not Quite Home for the Holidays, hovers over another large photo of Kathleen holding the plate of food. She crumples the paper and shoves it into the trash. Shown from outside, she backs her car out of the garage and stops for a moment in the street as the garage door slowly closes. As Kathleen drives away, she passes a delivery truck coming from the opposite direction. The driver turns the corner and parks at the curb in front of Kathleen's home. The driver gets out. With a box tucked under his arm, he crosses to the front door, carrying a clipboard, and rings the bell. No one answers, and he props the box against the house beside the front door. In her car, Kathleen is reading the crumpled paper. Comfort food has never been so cold. <sighs> the paper spread across her steering wheel as she maneuvers through traffic. She answers her cell phone. Yes, Spartan, I'm reading it, and no, it does not mean we're closing for Christmas. Kathleen? Kathleen, are you there? She closes the phone and tosses it onto the seat beside her. The screen ID reads, Mom. Later, she enters Tiamo's. A male jogger turns to look at her and runs into a street sign. Inside, she passes a man with graying hair. Morning. Good morning, my dear. I know you've read it, so you can cut the pleasantries. Uh, read what? The article. What'd you guys do? Hide them when I walked in? Hand them over? Oh, uh, yes, well... She gathers some papers. It really isn't so bad. They called me a gourmet Grinch. People should be with their families on Christmas. Well, we're like family, right? 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 I guess. Like a... Oh, dysfunctional. Family. Who never goes on vacation. Very funny. Almost as funny as this. He gives Kathleen some notes. Uh, she's relentless. Now, shouldn't you just talk to her? She said it was urgent. It's just her annual Christmas invitation. It really wouldn't help to close for a day. 
Not a chance. I have mouths to feed. Not that, not that though. I will not abandon my loyal holiday loners. Besides, how, how, how can, can we, we feed them? We aren't open. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well. And then we'd better rethink your Christmas gift. Kathleen stands straighter and smiles. A Christmas gift? Yeah, we were all going to pitch in and uh, change the locks. <laughs> oh, not that. I could kiss you. Speaking of which, uh, the gray-haired man steps from the restaurant bar with mistletoe. He holds it over his head and buckers into a kiss. Stop. Oh, stop that. Oh. Marmy, if you don't put that away, I'm gonna... Gonna what? Have some fun? You're a prude. That's right. I'm a prude. I'm a Christmas prude. Now get back to work. She goes into the next room. She's the prude who stole Christmas. I heard that. The gray-haired man faces people at the bar. All right, people. Doors open in half an hour.